it was earlier that day, that morning, in fact, that Mary Magdalene discovered the empty tomb. She ran to tell Simon Peter and the beloved disciple, and they came to verify her findings before leaving her alone there once more. Jesus then revealed himself, resurrected to her, to Mary Magdalene, whom he commissioned, tell the others. Now, it is the evening of the same day that the tomb was discovered to be empty. The disciples are gathered behind locked doors. They are there behind those closed doors out of fear. Presumably, the authorities, learning also that the tomb is empty, are searching for Jesus' disciples. Will they too be arrested? Will they be crucified as well? Nobody knows. But because of their fear, they are gathered together behind closed doors. Jesus appears in the midst of them, and he commissions those gathered. Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Everyone except for Thomas is there. Veronica Mary Roth, in her book, Living Resurrected Lives, explains, Thomas, Thomas had been so devastated by the news of Christ's shameful death that he could not bring himself to be with the others. He could not even bear to mourn with them, so he remained alone. He cut himself off from the others and was hiding. Well, at some point later in the week, the disciples, they find Thomas, and they tell him what they experienced. We have seen the Lord. But no, Thomas's depression and his sense of loss were so great, he could not be so easily consoled. He could not accept their oral testimony. He did not want to be duped into a false dysphoria like he felt like they had been duped into. How can this be true? He would not consider such an outrageous claim, even based on the eyewitness account of his friends. No, he wanted to confirm the story for himself. I will not believe unless I see the mark of the nails, put my finger in the mark and my hand in Jesus' side. If I don't get to do those things, I will not believe. Doesn't Thomas sound like a lot of people that insist on the hard evidence? But even when the hard evidence is given, will they enter into belief then? We wonder. Thomas, though, represents all who doubt. He represents all who fear. It's scary to commit to something that seems so unbelievable. But the root of his disbelief is found in that fear. The tomb is empty. It's scary. It is those who doubt who ask how, like Thomas is asking. The more faithful who enter faithfully seek to understand a different question. Why? When, how is it possible that Christ can be resurrected beyond any reasonable sense out of nothing becomes, why is it possible that Christ can be resurrected? That shifts everything. We come to understand what John has been writing about the whole time. God did not send his son to condemn but to save. Why? Because God so loves. Our Christian tradition is the only faith tradition to claim an empty grave. The empty grave points to God's living presence with us, in us, and through all who believe and share this good news as Jesus has asked Mary Magdalene to share it and then the other disciples. Peace be with you, I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. 
the Holy Spirit that assists us in our believing. The empty tomb and Jesus' resurrection appearances point to God with us, Emmanuel. Now, one entire week has passed, and all are gathered again behind closed doors, and this time Thomas is there too. And despite the shut locked doors, Jesus once again appears in their midst. Again, he says to them, peace be with you. And Jesus invites Thomas's senses, touch, hear Jesus's voice, see for yourself. Notice how Jesus does not condemn Thomas, even in his doubting, but is there to confirm and to give Thomas exactly what Thomas needs. This helps Thomas quickly move from the question how. How is this possible to the answer? Yes, this is possible. In seeing and touching and hearing Jesus, Thomas understands why. Not out of God's condemnation, but out of God's love has Jesus been resurrected so that we could all come to believe in the good news. The poet E.E. E. Cummings was once asked, what one word best describes God? I imagine we would all struggle with that question and have to think about it for a moment, and the same was true for Cummings. But he replied eventually, yes, God is yes. God is yes is what the great celebration of the 50 days of Easter is about. We celebrate for this entire season that God is yes. That God is not in nothing, no thing, but in everything. Everything that God has given life to, God is in. God is infinitely yes. God is infinitely life, infinitely forever. I thank you, God, for this most amazing day, writes the poet Cummings. I thank you, God, for this most amazing day, for the leaping greenly spirits of trees and a blue true dream of sky, and for everything which is natural, which is infinite, which is yes. I, who have died, am alive again today, and this is the sun's birthday. This is the birthday of life and of love and wings and of the gay great happening illimitably earth. How should tasting, touching, hearing, seeing, breathing any lifted from the no of all nothing, nothing, human merely being doubt, unimaginable you, you, God. Now the ears of my ears awake, now the eyes of my eyes are open. And now Jesus blesses us. Blessed are you who have not seen and yet have come to believe. I say this to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.